Hello and welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for May of 2023. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kell Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. And I'm Julia Mijas and I'm in San Francisco, California. Let's take a look at what's happening in May. Well, hello, Aquarius. We're going to start with Pluto, which has entered into your sign right here. Pluto is such a transformative figure and uh, brings such heavy themes uh, such as death and rebirth, transformation and metamorphosis. And Pluto is just this year dipping into the itty bitty beginning of Aquarius and then going to retrograde back into Capricorn for a bunch of months. And then we'll move into your sign again next year for reals. We'll be traveling along your sign for at least a decade and this is like the warning shot across the bow, if you will. As Pluto moves along through your sign, Aquarius, at some point, Pluto is going to get to um, the arena where it really matters for you, whether that means that you have Aquarius rising and Pluto's going to cross your ascendant, or whether that means that you have an Aquarius sun and Pluto's going to conjunct your sun. Any way you look at it, Pluto is going to bring you a very big transformation at some point in the next decade. And uh, it's within your power to find out exactly when, um, probably by consulting an astrologer. Um, but just suffice it to say that this month, Pluto goes retrograde in your sign uh, right here in your first house. And so it's really, it's really a time to start thinking about how you present yourself to the world, how you identify, how you draw boundaries, and, uh, and whether that is due for some transformation. Have you become inauthentic, kind of unreal, kind of surfacy? And what would happen if those layers were peeled away and you felt more vulnerable? How would you express yourself then? So this is something to begin thinking about, and it's going to be a very long and slow process, as I said. Um, and this month is really just uh, just the beginning, uh, the very uh, faint, wispy beginnings of uh, what will be a long-term and deep process. Um, so also on May 1st, Juno is going to move ahead into Gemini, which means your fifth house, Aquarius. And Juno is an asteroid goddess to do with partnership, particularly committed long-term partnerships of all kinds, whether that's, you know, the bestie that you've known since grade school, or whether that's your spouse or your long-term committed relationship, your domestic partnership, your co-parenting partnership, or your business partnership. So wherever Juno goes, she brings the spirit of collaboration and, uh, and mutual support and wants for things to be fair and balanced in that arena. She's entering into the fifth house this month. This is a house of fun, pleasure, and play. It's a house of creation, recreation, and procreation. This is the best transit for having fun with your partner. She's going to be in this house for about two months. That'll give you plenty of time to plan some fun, some games, some entertainment, some enjoyable activities with your partner. Whether that means, you know, a trip to Vegas with your spouse, whether that means uh, taking your business partner and the team uh, in the business that you run off for some outdoor adventure and some team building exercises. Any way you look at it, um, this can be a really, really fun transit and it can be really bonding for you in the partnership and also um, across the fabric of your social life as well. Now, the third thing I want to talk about right now is Ceres, who begins the month retrograde as she has been since Feb early February. 
about the 5th or 6th of February, she moved uh, retrograde in Libra, and I declared a financial rebalancing period, which began in your ninth house. And you would know that if you'd checked your February horoscope that I made for you. And so a financial rebalancing period began, but since then, Ceres has retrograded into Virgo and your eighth house. This is a house of the finances that you share with a partner or in a pool with a group. And so Ceres has taken her dis most discerning eye being in Virgo. She really cares about the details and getting things correct you know, really dotting the I's, crossing the T's, and doing the math correctly, and uh, she's come into the realm of your shared finances, so there may have been some of your investments that have gotten tangled up. Uh, it could be that you're involved in some of the collapse, uh, collapsing uh, to do with crypto that's been happening um, in the last several months, and, uh, and it could be that things have gotten into quite a mess, and this is now the time to really clean it up and to figure out how to operate with a, a better uh, approach to detail, uh, more integrity, more of a holistic approach, uh, and a more discerning eye as to where you put your money and, uh, and who you pool it with. So that could be the big preoccupation, but Ceres is going direct this month, and that's really the great news. It happens on the 6th or the 7th of May, depending on your time zone. And uh, she's still in your 8th house, so there's quite a bit to do to continue, you know, cleaning this up. But that really becomes possible now that you've really arrived at the hard nubbin at the center of the situation. So that happens early in the month, and then the rest of the month is spent, you know, really getting things unsnarled, untangled, figuring out where are all those eyes that didn't get dotted before and going through and doing that. By the end of the month, Ceres has uh, gotten back to something more like her usual speed. And uh, at that point, I think that we're all going to be out of the woods. Hey, Julia, what is up with Mercury, Venus, and Mars for the Aquarians of the world this month? Well, Aquarius, Mercury, our good old friend Mercury starts off the month retrograde. Uh, Mercury represents communication. So retrograde times can be full of miscommunications. And since this is happening in your fourth house, this could come from the people close to you, the people you live with, your family members particularly, which are all ruled by the fourth. Now, on May 1st, Mercury is going to exactly conjoin the sun, and we call that lesser epiphany day because it's doing this retrograde versus greater epiphany day when he does it direct. But um, during this time, you actually might get a little bit of insights, especially amidst all the confusion and miscommunications you've been having lately with this Mercury retrograde. This uh, transit might even mean you're rethinking or reviewing something having to do with your home in general, too. Then by May 14th, Mercury finally goes direct, and I'd say that it's totally out of its shadow period about a week after that. So things will get a lot easier um, once Mercury is finally direct. Now, Venus, on the other hand, our planet of love and pleasure and beauty, starts the month in the fifth. So the first week of the month, great time for dating because Venus brings love to our life and the fifth can represent dating in general. It's also a nice transit if you have any kids because you might find more fun and pleasure with them too with Venus in the fifth house. It's also a lovely transit for getting creative uh, in your life. Then by May 7th, Venus enters your sixth house where she's going to be for the rest of the month. This is a house of work. It's a house of order. It also represents your health um, and any types of routines in your life. So I always think that Venus in the sixth house is really great for beauty routines, um, you know, or even if you're doing some other type of workout that, you know, you want to have a little bit of an aesthetic impact on your body, you know, Venus, squats to help you lift your butt or something. Venus in the six would be really good for that. Um, Venus in the six is also nicer for getting along well with the people you work with, um, you know, just finding a little bit more pleasure at the job too, which is really nice. And then finally, the last planet I want to mention is Mars. He is a planet of activity. He's a little tricky 
trickier to deal with than Venus and Mercury, but he definitely has a higher side. And Mars starts the month in your sixth house. He's going to be there for almost the first three weeks of the month. So Mars is being, bringing more activity into your workplace. Um, this could be a time of being very driven at your job, getting a lot of things done. Um, but it can also be a time of not seeing eye to eye with the people you work with, or maybe having some issues with clients and customers, for example. Mars in the six can be a great time for starting a new routine in your life, especially one that requires you to get physical in some way. Um, you know, like starting a new workout routine, for example, can be great for Mars in the six. Mars can be a little irritating for chronic issues in the sixth house migraines, menstrual cramps, blood issues, inflammation, for example. Um, but sometimes these things come up so that we can actually get driven to put some better routines in our place that might actually support your health too. Um, then finally, on May 20th, Mars is going to enter your seventh house. This is a house that represents your romantic relationships, your business partnerships, any contractors you hire. So Mars in the seventh house might mean you're working more one-to-one -one with somebody else. Um, maybe you and your pro uh, your partner are involved in a project together, or maybe you're getting a lot of work done with your business partner if you work with anybody else. Um, Mars in the seventh house might mean that some conflict can crop up in these relationships. Some annoyances um, can also kind of come up in their in in that place. But um, you know, it, for example, like if you hire someone new to ask you for advice on anything, like a doctor or a lawyer, you know, you might want a second opinion with. Mars Mars in the seventh. However, um, Mars in the seventh can be great for getting a lot of work done within the context of a partnership. So try to just channel all that Mars energy into getting a lot of stuff done with your partner, maybe at home, or getting through a lot of work with your business partner. Mm. Yep. Good use of it. Hi, Jamie here. I just wanted to say thank you for watching this video. And if you're enjoying it, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Your support helps keep this content free, and you can also get access to workshops where I will cast your chart live in the workshop. The link can be found in the description below. Thanks again, and let's get back to the video. Well, let's talk about some moons. Starting on May 5th, we have uh, a second eclipse in this eclipse season that we're in, and uh and this is the end of it. So, and that's a good thing because this one's pretty intense. It's a moon in Scorpio right here in your 10th house. Opposite Sun, Uranus, and Vesta here in your fourth house. Now, uh, an eclipse shows us our shadow and can be very uncomfortable to go through because we're looking, we're forced to look at stuff about ourselves that we don't look at every day. We'd rather put behind us. A lunar eclipse does that in an emotional way. And a lunar eclipse at the south node does that in a releasing way. So we may find a lot of emotions coming up that uh, we benefit from releasing them instead of holding on to them. And uh, moon in Scorpio can make for some very strong emotions that veer off into what can be some fairly negative terrain, such as power and control issues, feelings of vulnerability, paranoia that lead to manipulative behavior. And when this shows up in your 10th house, um, it, it can be pretty intense because this is the domain of career. So another thing to bear in mind about lunar eclipses particularly is that they are built on a full moon. And uh, when the moon and the sun oppose each other, we find uh, it's a full moon and we find that there's often a relationship dynamic at play here. And so you may identify with that moon in Scorpio and be feeling and be like the place where all those feelings of vulnerability uh, and powerlessness emerge. And, uh, and then you may find that somebody in your life, probably somebody at home who supports you or helps you to make home uh, a safe nest uh, is there balancing you and, and giving you a reality check about what you're feeling. And it might be really good to listen to that person uh, so that you can calm down and not make messes at work. 
So uh, and another way that this could play out is that you may find yourself identifying with the more calming and soothing Taurus end of this polarity, whereas somebody at your work, maybe your boss, for example, uh, might be just throwing a big old fat tantrum uh, or behaving in some manipulative, even underhanded way. So watch out for those dynamics under this uh, lunar eclipse. Lunar eclipses, they, they come and they go pretty quickly. And it's just important not to be in the crossfire when it's happening. Um, so, and that's going to be around May 5th. Now, the second moon that I want to tell you about is coming up on the 19th. And it's a new moon in Taurus with just a wildly different mood. So much nicer. Uh, of a mood. It's the moon and the sun coming together at the very end of Taurus right here in your fourth house. Your fourth house is just so busy and active this month in general. Look how many planets are here. So many that the chart software has to like stretch the house in order to fit everything in. And uh, this being the house of home and family, heritage, domestic life, your nest, your uh, inner worlds. Um, this new moon happening here can be uh, can signal some wonderful beginnings in uh, in your home life, planting the seeds for more and better solidity, particularly financial solidity in your home life. Another thing that I want to mention to you most particularly is that this moon is especially lucky for conceiving. If you are trying to conceive with your partner, this is a really good time to try. It doesn't matter which partner is the woman. Um, this is a really good time uh, to try to conceive. And uh, even if that involves some form of uh, assisted reproductive therapies, such as IVF or IUI, uh, this is also a really good month for those things too. And if you're not wanting to conceive and you know yourself to be fertile, this would definitely be a month for uh, reaching for that contraception for sure. Now, there's going to be a seasonal change, which happens on the 21st. And you'll see that this large grouping of planets that are emphasizing home life are going to begin to break up and move on into your fifth house, uh, which is, of course, home and uh, um, play, play and fun and pleasure. And Julia described it really well when she talked about Venus being here early in the month. And so wherever the sun goes, we want to shine the sunlight of our high quality attention so that things can thrive and flourish in that area. So while the sun is back in your fourth house during the early part of the month, definitely want to put your attention onto your home life. Um, and help things to flourish there. But as the sun moves into the fifth house, you're going to find that um, you're really itching to play, that it's really time to have some fun, make a little pleasure trip, um, relax and chill and enjoy and entertain yourself, engage in the hobbies and the things that you do for recreation. Um, and Oh, what was the other piece? Yes, I think of this as the house of your personal brand. So this is a really great transit for things like getting headshots, for um, for putting, you know, a new, uh, for, for changing up your identity on your social media, and for, you know, engaging in some personal growth that helps you to get a better sense of who you are at the core and engaging in any creative activities at all. Um, this wonderful period uh, of uh, identity flourishing begins on May 21st and proceeds for about 30 days. So uh, I'd say there's definitely a, a bunch of fun ahead for you, Aquarius. Well, that's all for today. If you love Pandora Astrology's free and informative horoscopes, please do hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share our horoscopes with your friends. We make these horoscopes for you for free, and if you appreciate it, supporting us on Patreon is the best way to show it. Share our horoscopes with your friends, too. Enjoy your May, and until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye-bye.